país Muhammad Baloch, member of the International Voice for Baloch Missing Persons. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. A year ago, you began what was called the Long March from Quetta to Islamabad as a way to highlight the Pakistani state's crimes against humanity in Balochistan, especially the, uh, the enforced disappearance and the in-custody killings of uh, disappeared Baloch activists. Explain us a little bit about that march. Yes, um, actually the enforced disappearances in Balochistan by the Pakistani state forces are one of the major issues. And basically, there was no media coverage about these enforced disappearances. There was no talk. So we have been protesting peacefully inside Balochistan for so many years. And after that, we thought we will have this long march to gain wider media attention and the attention of international community. And the aim of the march was to go to the United Nations headquarters in Islamabad. So our friends in Balochistan, they started the long march from Quetta, the capital city of Balochistan, on 27th October 2013. And after 106 days uh, of the foot march, they arrived in Islamabad, where they met with the UN uh, office, officials and other European people and the media groups to highlight this issue. You said that the media just ignored your struggle in Baluchistan. Right now, there is a protest camp in Quetta asking for the release of uh, abducted Baloch activists from illegal custody in Pakistan. Tell us about that. Yes, this protest camp has been established um, since 2009, and today it was their 1500, 1570th day like 1,570 days they have been sitting peacefully in front of Quetta Press Club. And when it is uh, winter, because Quetta is very uh, cold, they uh, move to Karachi where they will protest. And the protest is being uh, headed by uh, Qadir Baloch. His own son was abducted and then killed in custody by Pakistani forces. And then there is... Uh, Uh, a lady called Farzana Majid Baloch. Her brother was abducted in 2009 and he is still missing. He was a student leader. And both of them, uh, Kadir Baloch and Farzana Majid, were also heading the long march from Quetta to Islamabad when it happened last year. Do you think that these kind of actions, like uh, the long march or the protest camp, Uh, are they having the resonance they deserve in the international media? Or did the United Nations do anything about uh, the repression in Balochistan? United Nations, unfortunately, has not done much. Uh, but when our uh, friends, uh, the Long March, arrived in Islamabad, they submitted a petition to the United Nations. And then a uh, few months back, when we went to Geneva, we met some UN uh, officials and they did acknowledge that they received a petition from the Vice for Baloch Missing Persons and they said they were uh, uh, going to look into these cases. But openly in public, so far, they have not said anything about enforced disappearances in Balochistan. Why do you think this is happening? Why do you think that the Western media and the human rights organizations in uh, general simply just ignore the situation of the Baloch people? It is very unfortunate that international media, they ignore the issue of Balochistan as well as the other oppressed nations like the Tamils, the Kurds, even the Basques. And um, I think they have their own interests. They have their own interests with Pakistan, like U.S. and um, British forces are in Afghanistan. They need Pakistan's help. Even here in British media, we have been telling them to highlight the Balochistan issue. We have been protesting here in front of British Prime Minister's house, in front of BBC. But apart from BBC Urdu, the rest of the media so far have ignored the Baloch issue. And I think it is very unfortunate that the media is in ignoring one of the uh, best part of the world because Baloch people are uh, secular by nature. They are same as the Kurdish people. The world have ignored the Kurdish people for long. But today, when they need the Kurdish people help to fight against Islamic uh, 
fundamentalists in Syria. Now they are helping them for the, their own interest. And the same thing is happening in Balochistan. Pakistani army and ISI is promoting Islamic extremism in Balochistan. And one day will come the world, the international media and the international community will need the help of Baloch people to fight and to stop this Islamic madness in Balochistan and in that region. And what is the situation of those radical Islamist groups right now in uh, Balochistan? Are they getting stronger or are they still too weak to be a real threat? At the moment, they are minority. They are at the moment, they are not even Islamic. They are criminal gangs supported by the Pakistani army and the ISI. And they have been given Islamic names. And recently, they have started attacking the schools in Balochistan, private schools and girls' schools especially. They have uh, burned so many schools. They have uh, threatened teachers. They abducted even few teachers. And they have threatened the families to stop sending their girls to schools. And uh, in Quetta, in Noshki, in Mastong, they have even um, thrown acids on the faces of girls so that they can scare them from going to the schools. So if the international community continues to ignore the Baloj people, then I think these groups will get stronger and it will become a big problem in the entire region. Can you tell us how many Baloch activists are still in jail or uh, have disappeared since the long march took place? What is the situation now in Balochistan? Because the repression keeps being as uh, as brutal as it was before, isn't it? Indeed, you are right. The, it is still continued unabet unabated. And the enforced disappearances actually started long before the long march. The long march was just one of the um, mediums to highlight this case. And since 2010 until now, according to our resources, more than um, 18,000 Baloch people are in the custody of Pakistani forces. They have abducted them. And more than 2,000 among them have been killed in the custody. And their bodies were thrown in different areas, like deserted areas, in roads, in jungles, sometimes even in cities. And even as I speak to you right now, I'm, I've heard the news that four bodies of Baloch missing persons were found in Karachi. And um, they have been uh, recognized uh, as previously missing persons. Their name was in the list of Baloch missing persons. So this is something which is ongoing and which is very worrying for uh, the Baloch people. Most of our audience surely want to know about uh, Balochistan. How would you explain them about your country and uh, how it is divided between different states? And of course the struggle and the repression you have there. Uh, where does it all come from? Well, Balochistan is basically uh, situated in uh, Central Asia. It's um, between Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Before 1839, Balochistan was an independent country and then British came into that region and they divided Balochistan into three parts. They gave one part to Iran, which we now we call Western Balochistan. One part went to Afghanistan, which is now called Northern Balochistan. And one part is currently occupied by Pakistan, which is called Eastern Balochistan. Before finishing, would you like to add anything else? maybe to send a message to to our listeners to be aware of what is happening there in Balochistan? Um, well, my message to your listeners and to listeners uh, in the wider world, to the international community, even the UN, if they, they might happen to hear your radio, is that please take action against the Pakistani state's enforced disappearances in Balochistan, human rights violations in Balochistan, As I explained, Balochistan was an independent country and people there are struggling to regain their independence. Baloch people, unfortunately, the media, even international media, if sometimes if they happen to write about Balochistan, they follow the narrative of Pakistani media, which is wrong. The Pakistani media says the Baloch are struggling for greater share in resources or they are struggling for uh, some kind of revenue or provincial autonomy, these are wrong. The Baloch people are struggling to regain their independence. They are struggling against human rights violations and they want 
to have their own free and democratic country in the name of Balochistan, which they used to have. Faiz Muhammad Baloch, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you very much for having me and uh, have a great evening.